Hello again, and this is Dr. Michael Hart. Uh, we are considering Nevada State Government, the executive, in this particular presentation. So Nevada uses separation of powers, just like all other states in the United States. There are three branches, uh, legislative, executive, and judicial. Nevada's legislature is bicameral, as you might have learned already from a lecture on the legislative branch. And this is true in all states except uh, for Nebraska, where the legislative branch is unicameral and you only have the state assembly but no senate. Nevada has a plural executive. And uh, since 2015, Nevada also has three levels of the judiciary, state judiciary. Prior to 2015, we only had uh, two in Nevada. So the executive branch... There are six independently elected members of the plural executive. The governor is the chief executive, but the governor cannot fire the other five members of the independently elected plural executive. These elected offices are lieutenant governor, attorney general, secretary of state, treasurer, and controller. The gov governor, as of this recording, is uh, Steve Sisolak. He was elected in November of 2018 and took office in January of 2019. His term ends in 2023. Uh, prior to being elected governor of Nevada, Steve Sisolak served as District A representative on the Clark County Commission in Nevada from 2009 to 2019, so that's a decade-long service in uh, local government. He also served as District 2 member of the Nevada State Board of Regents from 1999 to 2008. Steve Sisolak considered a run for governor in the 2014 election, but then announced in February of 2014 that he would not run. It was probably a uh, wise decision. On November 13, 2020, Sisolak announced that he had tested positive for coronavirus, although Given uh, events of recent weeks and recent months, this is not surprising. Uh, former President Trump tested positive for coronavirus. Uh, many, many government officials at all levels have tested positive for it, uh, not just in the United States, but abroad. The virus that began, uh, we believe, in the province of Wuhan in China has long become a global pandemic, and uh, politicians are human beings just like all of us are, and they're subject, subject to all sorts of illnesses. Uh, Steve Sisolak earned his bachelor's degree from University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, and later he received his master's degree from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. This is remarkable. Uh, almost no governors in Nevada's history actually have a degree from UNLV, but many of them have a degree from UNR especially in recent decades. And one of the reasons why is because uh, political connections that traditionally have been uh, optimal for becoming governor of Nevada have been forged in, uh, in the northern uh, part of the state in connection with uh, mining industry, the government services, etc. So many governors have received their education in the uh, UNR and have strong connections and sympathy, sympathies with uh, the northern part of the state. So Steve Sisolak, in this regard, is more an exception uh, than the rule. Line of gubernatorial succession is quite straightforward. If governor dies or otherwise becomes unable to carry out his duties as governor, then lieutenant governor becomes acting governor uh, and if Lieutenant Governor is also unable to do so, then President Pro Tem of the Nevada Senate becomes acting governor, and that's according to Article 5 of the Nevada Constitution. Now, the Speaker of the Assembly and Secretary of State are next in line. Governor is the chief executive, and this is one of the main sources of his power. What does he do in this capacity? Well, he appoints about 80 heads and deputy heads of departments and members of 200 boards, commissions, and committees. The governor himself is a member of several boards and commissions. Some of the key appointments the governor makes are 
heads of the Department of Motor Vehicles, Public Safety, Human Resources, and Employment Security. Members of the Gaming Control Board, the Gaming Commission, the Public Works Board, and the Parole Commission. The Governor does not need legislative approval to make these appointments. Nevada Governor does not have the sole power to issue pardons. I think this is just kind of a minor ding on his overall uh, capacity to rule. I think this is a kind of a minor point. But recently there's been a change and uh, I wanted to bring this up. Attempts to grant him this power through constitutional amendments have failed. So instead, Governor serves as one member of the nine-member State Board of Pardons and Commissioners. Now, what is required uh, for a pardon to be granted is a majority of the board must vote to grant that pardon. And the governor has no veto power over pardon anymore. And this is new. This only became true after uh, the uh, election of November of 2020. Prior to this election, um, governor was still member of the board but he had veto power over pardons, not anymore. Now his vote is just one of the nine and no veto power is given to him. Additional chief executive powers of, Nevada as, of Nevada's governor appoint officials to serve in some offices should a vacancy occur between elections. And this is true actually at all levels, not just at the state level, but also at the federal level. Uh, like, uh, let's say, a uh, senator, U.S. senator representing Nevada in the United States Senate has to resign like uh, John Anson needed to some years ago because of a scandal or passes away, uh, then there's a vacancy and that vacancy is going to be uh, filled by the state governor at his discretion. The governor can suspend the fine or forfeiture and grant a reprieve of up to 60 days from the time of judgment. He serves on the board of state prison commissioners, which oversees state prison system, serves on the board of examiners, which oversees all claims against the state for money or property. Now, governor is also chief of state, and that's an important ceremonial and symbolic role. The governor serves as the state's goodwill ambassador, attending various state functions and representing the state to the world outside Nevada. In this role, the governor will meet with president and other governors and will also do things like ribbon cutting at new casinos and groundbreaking for important construction projects. Governor is the chief legislator. This is a major source of governor's power. The state constitution requires that governor gives state of the state address. And in this address, the governor outlines his legislative program. The governor has a lot of clout over the budget. And this is uh, really uh, one of his main sources of power uh, as chief legislator, maybe the main source of power as chief legislator. Why? Well, because Nevada uses what is known as the system of a central clearance which means that all budgetary requests by agencies must first go to the governor before they go to the state legislature. So an agency head can request any budget from the governor, but is usually not in a position to later ask the legislature more than the governor recommends. So the governor's budget is usually adopted with only a few modifications by the legislature. And budget makes policy. If money is not being spent on a particular program or policy, then that program or policy, it is as if it doesn't even exist. Okay. Uh, the governor has veto power. That too is a major source of his power for sure, as uh, all bills passed by both houses, both chambers of the state legislature uh, in the same form. Once that takes place, they go to the governor and the governor can sign veto or do nothing, okay? The governor's vetoes have been overridden approximately 12% of the time. This is the kind of sum total for Nevada's history, which is actually much higher than the national average of 1% uh, for all state governors. And um, I think uh, this is much higher because uh, most uh, state legislators in Nevada represent the southern part of the state and Clark County more specifically because almost 80% of all Nevadans live in Clark County 
It's a very urban and suburban uh, county. The other 16 counties are uh, much more rural, uh, especially the 15 counties outside the Clark and the Washoe County, very rural, sparsely populated, uh, much more conservative, and uh, less tied to maybe casino and gambling interests. So um, most people vote Democratic in Southern Nevada, um, or at least the plurality of them vote Democratic, traditionally uh, more Democratic votes than Republican votes. And so what you have is um, legislators who represent the Southern part of the state have often been able to override the veto of Nevada's governors many of whom, great many of whom, in recent decades have really been uh, more closer to uh, interests of uh, the northern part of the state. Lieutenant Governor uh, currently is Kate Marshall, and she was elected in November of 2018 and assumed office in January of 2019. Now, nine out of 36 times, Lieutenant Governor and State Governor belong to different political parties. Under Article 5 of Nevada State Constitution, Lieutenant Governor becomes acting governor not only in case of vacancy, but also in cases with the governor's absence from the state for any reason. The Nevada Supreme Court interpreted this to mean that there must be some critical need in order for Lieutenant Governor to act. In other words, if Lieutenant Governor uh, is in the state and Governor is not, and Lieutenant Governor is technically acting as governor, that governor cannot do major things like propose new uh, legislation because at that point, Lieutenant Governor is uh, more or less just like a caretaker and doesn't have the full powers that the elected governor usually has. Lieutenant Governor chairs two commissions, Economic Development and Tourism. And uh, this is different from what you find in many states in the United States. Uh, typically, you find that governor, it's, it's the state governor's a job to promote tourism and economic development, but not so in Nevada. And these two roles, and in Nevada, they're closely connected, tourism and economic development, very closely connected. These two roles give Lieutenant Governor actual power, actual political significance. Uh, he, or in our case, she, uh, is not uh, just there in the wings waiting for governor to retire or to pass away and, and take, take his place. In fact, uh, she, she possesses real uh, political uh, significance. Attorney General, after Governor Attorney General is the most visible member of the Nevada executive branch. So even though Lieutenant Governor is technically next in line after Governor to take the Governor's office, actually the visibility of Attorney General is greater than that of Lieutenant Governor. Attorney General is the chief legal advisor to the state. Attorney General serves on the Board of Prison Commissioners, Board of Examiners, and Board of State Pardon Commissioners. Attorney General also defends the state or prosecutes on behalf of the state in the Nevada State Supreme Court and the Supreme Court of the United States. Nevada Attorney General is Aaron Ford, who was born in 1972, and he was elected to this office in 2018 and assumed office in January of 2019. The next position is that of Secretary of State. This official is a custodian of the state's records. Think of it like uh, the chief clerk of the state. Also, Secretary of State, along with governor, must sign all state grants and commissions. Serves on the Board of Prison Commissioners and on the Board of Examiners. By state law, Secretary of State commissions all notary public in Nevada. Secretary of State prepares official election ballots, publishes official election results, and issues certificates of election to the winners. Barbara Zagavsky is the Secretary of State. Uh, prior to her pos current position, she served in the Nevada Assembly from 1996 to 2001. State Treasurer. Now, State Treasurer and, and State Controller are two sides of the same financial coin. So, State Treasurer receives and invests all money paid to the state. Uh, state gets money from taxes, fines, and forfeitures. And then uh, what you do with that money is you invest it. So, it earns 
and he turns additional money in the form of interest or dividends or whatever. And then treasurer uh, distributes that money upon receipt of a warrant from the controller. Uh, currently, Zach Conine is the Nevada State Treasurer, and he was elected in 2018 and assumed office in 2019. Controller uh, issues warrants to the treasurer for the money to be paid, serves as the state's chief bookkeeper, making an annual report of the state expenditures to the governor and serving as the chief auditor in any claims against the state. Catherine Byrne is the Nevada State Controller. 